We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. Today's program is sponsored by the generous support of our patrons. Your support helps to further our historic preservation efforts. For more information, visit patreon.com forward slash 1834 Restoration House. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. We are restoring a circa 1900 Victorian house. It's been really dry around here lately, but we had a nice rainstorm overnight. And look at those beautiful flowers over behind me. That's a crepe myrtle tree and they bloom all over the south and they bloom all summer. Beautiful. Beautiful tree. I absolutely love it. We're expecting a delivery of bricks either today or tomorrow and they place them right here, which means that this stack, this is all we have left over from a thousand bricks. <laughs> We're gonna take this stack and just move it over here. Out of the way. All these bricks back here, these are my attempts at trying to cut bricks. Because sometimes, sometimes you may not need the whole brick. You may need two thirds of a brick or half of a brick or even a quarter of a brick or some other fraction. And you, what you do is take a chisel made for bricks, not for wood, and you whack it a couple of times with a hammer and then breaks. But a lot of times we're finding these bricks, even though you're trying to break off the end, they'll break right down the middle. And as you can see, the failure mode is identical. Yes. We don't know why, but there's something about these bricks. They're all this way. They fail this way every single time. So that's an interesting observation here. I wonder if the manufacturer would like to know about that. Well, our bricks have arrived and they're going to be unloading a forklift here in just a second. And then he'll pick up the load and then bring it up here and we'll show you how that works.
this is enough bricks to finish the project. Now, I was just looking over the pile here and I noticed these are supposed to be the same as these except that they're solid. But clearly the color is different, the texture is different, even though they're called Red Range Smooth. It just goes to show that you can get variations from batch to batch. So I guess the moral of the story is if you're going to do a brick job, make sure you get enough bricks the first time. That way they come from the same batch and they all look the same. But hey, right? Gives it character. Okay, we're just taking a break from the action here. This morning we moved the strings up here to the new position and then we broke into our brand new pallet of bricks. So these are red range smooth bricks without holes in them. And we need these to finish up the top because who wants a planter that's got a bunch of holes in the top? I gotta say, I'm not really happy with the way that the bricks are laying this way. And it's because we started off with a poor foundation. We didn't do a laser level in the first place. And we started off with some severe roller coaster action going on. And so we've been chasing that on this side of the house, trying to get that roller coaster to smooth out. On the other side of the house, it's a totally different story because we started with a laser line and we had a great baseline to start with and everything is laying out really nice. And so that side will be great. This side will be eh, semi-great. So I won't tell anyone if you don't. And just to illustrate the point, this side we started with the laser level from the get-go Clearly, you can see everything is smooth, straight, flat, looking great. And I'm kind of proud of this, you know, cross angle thing we got going here. It's kind of complicated, but it works good. Laying bricks is fun, right? You just, just do one after another. You know, it's interesting. They used to build schools and factories out of these things, and they would build these things two and a half inches at a time. One after another, after another, after another. And I seriously don't know how they managed to pull it off. This looks fantastic. I am so excited about this. Ah, it's a dream come true. The Victorian planter is redone. We've got the top layer of bricks just about finished all the way around. Then we can take the stakes out, clean up the bricks. 
It is a little higher than the original one, but I like it better this way. What can be more enticing than a curve that disappears around a corner? It just makes you want to follow it and see where it goes. Amazing. This thing was designed to mimic the foundation, which mimics the porch, which mimics the porch rails, which mimics the roof. Everything is on a curve, and so it's all proportional. So we didn't get this part done yesterday, and I've got the bricks laid out ahead of time so I know how many bricks I need, approximately where they're going to land. And one thing I did find is that I need a probably like a one third, maybe one quarter size brick here in the corner. So I have to figure out how to cut that. There's a tool called a brick set, which is about that wide and it's a blade. It's like this, except much wider. We don't have one. So we'll see if we can just kind of wing it with the smaller version. So I'm just gonna go and just kind of score a line here. I scored a line across here. That makes a weak spot. Hopefully that line becomes a fracture, which then becomes a break. So that's how bricks were traditionally cut. They didn't use fancy saws. They would just score it and then whack it. If I'd had a brick set, it would have gone faster than that. But now that I have this piece, I can bring this over and that piece will fit in here just like that. Okay, my friends, this is the last brick on the east side. The first thing I'm gonna do is just clean up the mortar a little bit because it was starting to get stiff. So that gets it all nice and loose. And I'll just lay a bed of mortar right down inside there. Take the point of my trowel, do it like that. And then I'm gonna come back like that. Now, you gotta ask yourself, how in the world are you supposed to put a brick in the middle if you can only butter one side? Well, the answer is simple. You're gonna butter both sides. So I'll butter that side like that. Now, hopefully that will stay when I turn it upside down. Nope. For some reason it stays on the smooth end better. So we'll go ahead and butter that. That hopefully will stay on there. And then I'll butter up this side like that. And now I just simply take that brick very carefully, kind of push it down in one side, push it down the other, wiggle it in place just like that. Super simple. And I'll just tap it into the position I want. Scrape off the excess mortar. Not much I can do here, I just gonna have to let it go. Make sure that's all good and straight. And I think the brick is laid. Now, I'm gonna switch positions with Jeannie and she's gonna show you how we finish up the joints. We've got some mortar on our trowel and we're gonna just gently fill it in some to start with. all the way down smooth it out make sure it's all level and that side is not filled in yet so let's fill that in Yeah, that string gets in the way quite often. <laughs> when we compress the joints like this and pack it in good, we make it a lot more watertight. It seals it up pretty good. We don't want any little air holes in it. Okay is not going to work in this situation. We're just going to have to use our fingers. 
here we go. And those are finished. Well, we have some mortar left over and we certainly don't want to waste mortar. It just so happens I've got two and a half bricks right here that need to be done. So let's go ahead and get this mortared up. We have a problem that's been dogging us ever since we started this project, and that's trying to cut these bricks right here. Now, you should be able to knock off, you know, a third or two thirds of a brick, and you should be able to do that very easily. It's a standard operation when you're doing brick work, but for some reason, every single time, and I, and I mean every single time that I have tried to knock off the first third of a brick, right here where the hole is, every time it splits right down the middle here in a certain diagonal pattern. And I've got a whole stack of bricks over there to prove it. Every single brick, probably, I don't know, maybe 10 of them, has the exact same brake pattern right down the middle. So after breaking yet another brick, trying to find a piece that fits here, I went ahead and got a solid brick out of the solid brick pallet and tried to do the same thing and I got exactly the cut I wanted, no problem whatsoever. So let's go ahead and drop some mortar down in there. Butter up the factory side, because the factory side always holds. And now we'll butter up the I guess you'd call it the field cut. And now, I should be able to just lay that right in there. Just like that. All right, that's good. I'm going to turn it over to Jeannie and let her do the finishing. Now I try not to use my hands because this stuff is not good on your skin. It dries it out really bad. But sometimes you just have to. I don't have to quite yet, so I'm not going to. <laughs> There we go, flatten that up and flatten that up. Push that part down. And we're gonna come over here and get this one in. And since it's not just for aesthetics, be sure and get the back sides as well. And that's not completely filled in, so let's get some. As we stand here with the cicadas merrily chirping away in the background, I've got some great news for you. It's time for these stakes to come out of the ground. They've been a pain. They've guided us. They've misled us. They've popped out. They've caused all kinds of trouble, but ultimately they helped us get the job done. And now it's time for them to go out.
Now that everything is uncovered, I'd like to show you what the bricks are supposed to look like. We've had a lot of storms, and every time it rains, it splatters mud on the bricks. So, I'm going to wash it off, and we'll take a look at it. We're really seeing this for the first time together. Well, what do you think? <laughs> it looks pretty good for the most part. There's a bit of cleanup we need to do still, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks better with the mud off there. It does. But what we're seeing here is mortar that got smeared on the face of the brick, and it's yeah. inevitable and hard to avoid. There's a special masonry cleaner that we'll use on this later on, and we'll show you all this. And when we get done, there won't be any more mortar smears. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. I've heard some rumors about some interesting things going on in the kitchen. So let's wander back there and see what's going on. We still have to unpack. Well, what's going on in here? Hi. Hi. Gingerbread cookies. Gingerbread cookies. Mmm. Summer style. <laughs> I'll take them any style. <laughs> Delicious. Mm -hmm. I was out there all day doing brickwork and got a lot done. And something occurred to me today because I think if I really hustle it, I think I can complete all the bricks, get all the bricks laid by Friday. It's a pretty aggressive goal, but I think I can do it. So today is Tuesday, and we'll be giving you updates every day as we go along with this thing and show you where it's at. You think we can do it? I think that's a huge order. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, there's quite a bit left to do, but... There is. But I'm going to hustle it. And, and it's hot. I probably sound really tired right now, and it's because I am. But anyway, we're going to hustle it, see if we can get those bricks done by the end of Friday, and we'll let you know how that works out. This is the output of yesterday's work. I got the top layer of bricks put on from here to the corner, and the corner is always the most difficult because of that funny overlap thing. And then I went over here, and I managed to get here, didn't quite finish this, but I did manage to get the complicated corner where the three intersections of brick meet. That's tough. So today, I'm going to work on finishing this up. I'll work on the catch basin, and then I'll come back over here, and over there by the steps, I'll put another layer of brick on and come back this way and see how far I can get. The reason I start the bricks on one end and come back to that end repeatedly is because I want them to stack properly. Anyway, the first thing I've got to do before I do anything else is get the water out of here. The humidity is generally really high in the mornings, but as the day wears on, the humidity decreases because all that moisture is going up. It goes up into the atmosphere and eventually turns into clouds and then we get thunderstorms and then it rains like it did last night and everything stays green. Okay. I'm following my string line. I also need to check and make sure that the brick face is flat to the one below it. Our porches are fairly deep as far as porches go. We never get water back up in here when it rains. I mean, it's always safe and dry, but last night the rain was so intense, the wind was literally blowing sideways and it got clear up in here. Now we have sacks of mortar that we keep up here. They were starting to get wet. That never happens. So we went ahead and covered it up and protected it. So as a result of all of that, everything is soaking wet. All of the holes in the bricks are full of water. They'll have to be blown out. But I want to show you the output from yesterday. We also managed to break a string. So I finished up this corner here. 
and then I continued building this wall this way and then I got down here to the catch basin. This is the finished height of the catch basin. I went ahead and bricked this up and I used old vintage bricks that we found laying all over the property. It just has so much character, these old bricks. But this is the finished height and this finished height corresponds to the finished height of this entire wall, catchment and planter system. Now, I didn't really get a lot done. Well, maybe I did. I, I did all that and I did one row here and then I topped this out here. So I guess I did more than I really thought I had. But yesterday was so hot. The humidity didn't drop like it was forecast to. And I actually pushed myself a little too far and almost went into heat exhaustion. This is the part that did me in. When I came back here to start another row, I had this brilliant idea of starting the last row and then building up the cap brick on top of that at the same time. And that way I could just do a continuous run all the way down. As soon as I hit the end, that would be the end of the brick laying. Well, I got this far and heat exhaustion started setting in. And so I just finished up what I was doing, cleaned up, went inside and spent the next few hours trying to get cool. So take this stuff seriously. It's, it's not fun to get heat exhaustion. I didn't quite get there, but I was getting close. But this is looking really good and it's really exciting to be kind of headed down the finish line. You see this drip right here. It's actually a leaky gutter right over my head. So we'll have to address that because the water is supposed to go down the gutter, not, you know, out all over the ground. This basin looks so good. It's a bit higher than I expected, but at least we won't run into it or not notice it. So that is fantastic. I love the old bricks, the old style. It looks so good. Looks like it's always been there. Love it. So yesterday was extremely hot. And at one point I had a feeling I needed to check the weather. So I looked at it and it said, it feels like 104 with 70% humidity. I had to go check on Mike and sure enough, he was not feeling too good. He said he's getting too hot. So I had him go inside and I cleaned up everything for him. Definitely check on your friends and family when you have a feeling something's not quite right. Today is going to be pretty severe again. We're gonna have extreme heat. They're calling for a heat advisory and the humidity is 99% at the moment. It's really hot. And on top of that, we have more severe thunderstorms coming today. So with everything being so wet, I don't think Mike's gonna get to his Friday deadline. <laughs> we'll see, it may be Saturday or Sunday. But look at all this debris from the thunderstorm last night. It was so severe and it was loud. We had one that hit right above our house. It lit up the whole house, very blinding. And I was very happy to hear though, that there was no fire trucks, which means that lightning didn't hit anything and nothing caught on fire. So that was good. But look at all this debris. Wow. It was intense. Here it is Friday morning. Got up bright and early and I laid some bricks and I'm going to keep going. But the chances of getting done today are pretty slim. So I put a limit on myself and that is when the sun breaks out, that'll be the last batch. And when I finish that batch, I'm done for the day. So that's my limit. So we'll see what we can get done here, but there's quite a lot to do because I'm doing two layers. I've got this one here I'm laying by a string. This is the last of the structural brick. And then I've got the finished brick on top of that. And I'm just simply laying that on there and leveling it up with my spirit level. And I think it's turning out pretty well, but I feel the finish line is so close. I just want to get there. But I also have to be careful because of the weather and the humidity. It's just too hot. If you're from the South, you know exactly what I'm talking about.
I've reached the corner and I've got a little bit of a problem. I've been trying to mimic the same type of brickwork that was done on the pillar over there. I think I've done a pretty good job for the most part, but the problem is when I get to the corner, I really don't want to have this big gap right here. And over there, you can see there's a porch deck covering up the top of that. And normally that's how those kinds of joints work, is something covers the top. So what I'd like to do is have two bricks intersect nicely right here, but that requires some cutting. So after kind of looking at this, staring at it for a while, I think what I'm gonna do is just push this up here so that that corner is flush with this. And then I'm gonna come around the back side, and where the two bricks intersect, I'm gonna make a mark. And then I'll bring that mark around the side, and then transfer it to the top. Now that I've got that, I'll lay down a straight edge here, and then mark it. So that's where I'll make my first cut. I put my brick on the miter saw, which is equipped with a masonry cutoff wheel. It's not made for steel or wood, it's made strictly for masonry. All right, let's take another brick here and I'll just set this on like that. Yeah, I'm just eyeballing them from corner to corner and just making sure that it's flush with this surface here. I'm coming back here and I'm marking where the two bricks intersect. And then I'll transfer that line. And then I'll make another line that goes from there to the corner. And this is where I need to make my next cut. All right, let's see how this works. Well, I'd have to call that a success. All I need to do is mortar it in place and we're done with that but i do need to cut another piece here and i think i can do that with the traditional hammer and chisel i found a brick that was broken from the factory i don't know how it got broken but it is and i can't use this in a regular location so i'm going to go ahead and take a piece off of here and we'll use that in that hole That's not quite what I had in mind. Okay, now we can take this filler, drop it in there and mortar it in place, and it'll look beautiful. Okay, now let's do the next corner. I went ahead and I put a brick here in a shim just to simulate the layer below, which I haven't yet laid. And I'll take the finished brick I'm gonna lay it on there. Make sure that the front face is flush with the rest of this. And then I'll just push it forward until the corner of the brick lines up with the back wall here. And everything is pretty well lined up there. Again, this isn't rocket science. So I'll go ahead and make a mark.
Well, it's a Monday morning and the weather is perfect. It's cold, it's overcast, the humidity is high, but you can't really feel it because it's so cold. But the important thing is that it's cool, not hot, because lately it's just been ridiculous. So this is ideal bricklaying weather right here. I'm planning on taking full advantage of it and see if I can press that brickwork all the way down to the end. That's my goal. Get it done today. That's my goal. Will I make it? I don't know. Well, I've got to say, after working for a while with this colder weather, I love it. It is so much easier to get work done. In fact, I thought I caught the whiff of a fireplace here a few minutes ago. In the middle of summer, that's kind of weird in the south, <laughs> but apparently somebody's cold and didn't want to turn on the furnace. All right. Anyway, let's get back to work here. So I'm on the home stretch, racing my way down to the end of the planter. The mosquitoes are out, and I think they'd love to take a, a bite of me, but I've got my bug spray on, and they've been staying away so far. All right, that's the bottom row, so that requires a brick with holes in it. Yeah, something's burning. I can smell it. Of course, it may not be a fireplace. It could be a grass fire. I had a neighbor stop by the other day and say hello, and he introduced himself and said that he's a brick mason. So it was fun to talk with him about bricks. Okay, I'm reaching the corner, so I'm going to start building from the corner that way. And that will kind of enforce the bond pattern. Practically speaking though, what it means is that when I get to the end here, I don't want the brick sticking out that way or coming up short. So this guarantees that the corner looks good. playing some mental gymnastics here, <laughs> trying to get that lined up right. Okay, there we go. You know, I need a little more mortar down here, so I'm gonna drop, drop some there. Okay, I think, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll just go ahead and true it up.
I should be able to make this work all the way to here. So let's just drop a couple of bricks in here real quick and see how it looks. Take that off. So we're looking for even gaps here. So it looks like in spite of my best efforts, it's not going to work out perfectly. Otherwise we're gonna have big gaps here. So I think what we'll have to do is properly gap it. And then come in with a small piece, something like this, and just order that down in there and that'll fix it. guess what? It's finished. The brick planter is finished. We do need to clean off the mortar on the sides still, but it is done. Other than that, we're done building it. Doesn't that look good? Now to fill it in with soil and figure out our plants. This side is done too. We still got to take the sticks out and the strings out. And it looks so good. It'll look better once it's cleaned up. <laughs> I like the corners here. This really matches the rest of the house over there. I really like that. You did a great job on that, my love. And then all the way down to here, the end of the planter, and then the brick wall to keep the catchment separated so the water will stay in there. Look at this transition. I love that. That is a fantastic job. Absolutely beautiful. Ooh, it needs cleaned out. <laughs> already. Okay, it's time for the ceremonial pulling of the stakes. Oh, isn't that fun? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you make it look so easy. Wiggle it back and forth. Now pull it. There. Ah, there we go. Yeah. I think we're intertwined here. <laughs> All right. Looking good. <laughs> Looking good. Well, that was a long episode, I think. It's taken several days to do this, and we've been just filming as much as we can and trying to work when we can. 
It's been a big job. Much bigger than I thought it would be. Way bigger than we thought it would be. But it turned out great. All we have to do now is clean it up, backfill it, and we need to make a few repairs back here on the V catchment, back in here, so that it will uh, channel water properly. And then we'll have to find another project. That is not hard to do. That's for sure. <laughs> This house always has something going on. Yes. Well, thank you for watching 1834 Restoration House. If you like what you see, please subscribe, tell your friends, like, and give us a comment. Let us know how we're doing.